Hello. Um, in recent videos, we have been reviewing the skull again, putting all this into the new dynamic labeling style that's evolved on this channel. And we've looked at the bones of the skull, the sutures of the skull, the uh, cranial foramina, that is the holes that connect the cranial cavity with the outside, but the face also has some foramina. These foramina, these openings that we see, these holes, tend to be the openings of bony canals. So let's have a quick run through of the major, of the, the, the foramina that we can see on the face and what runs through those holes, all right? Because it's useful. And it like finishes everything off, you know, adds on those other bits that we haven't done. But there's always more to do with the skull. All right then, we should probably start at the top. Pipe cleaner. Here's the orbit. Now just above the orbit, there is a foramen. Sometimes actually it's just a notch. It's not even, it's so close to the lip here that it just forms a notch. And you might actually be able to palpate this on yourself. I can feel a notch there. This is the supraorbital foramen or supraorbital notch. And the, you know, essentially structures within the orbit can pass through this foramen, through this notch to get to the upper forehead. So this is the frontal bone. The supraorbital foramen or supraorbital notch is in the, the frontal bone. And, very sensibly, it is carrying the supraorbital artery and the supraorbital vein and also the supraorbital nerve, which is a branch of the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. Alright, the trigeminal nerve is the major sensory nerve of the face, so that supraorbital branch is essentially carrying sensory fibres from the skin up here, superior to the orbit, back towards the brainstem. So a branch of the trigeminal nerve. Inside the orbit, there is a superior orbital fissure, which links the orbit with the cranial cavity. And there's an optic canal as well, which also links the cranial cavity with the orbit. But there is also an inferior orbital fissure, which is linking the orbit with the deep face. Now, down in the deep face, we have the pterygoid venous plexus. So, veins of the deep face draining various structures. So, this is one way in which inferior ophthalmic veins can drain blood from the structures within the orbit into the deep face. There are lots of links between veins and arteries in the face. So, the inferior orbital fissure links the orbit with the deep face. Now the pterygopalatine ganglions down here, this sends some branches up. Uh, there's a zygomatic branch of the maxillary nerve that sends a few branches through here and bits and bobs. But I think the major thing to think of is venous drainage from the orbit to the deep face through there. Now it's actually formed, it's, it's a gap between the bones. It's actually a shape made from um, the sphenoid bone and the maxilla uh, combining. Inferior to the orbit, we find an infraorbital foramen. Inside the orbit, in the floor, there's an infraorbital groove and then an infraorbital canal, which that's what's opening at the infraorbital foramen. So I should be able to push my pipe cleaner through and it would come up in the in the uh, inferior orbit, but it's not doing that probably because it's, although it's a very good plastic skull, it's not perfect. And the infraorbital foramen, sometimes called the inferior orbital foramen, but that's less fun, infraorbital, supraorbital, right? The infraorbital foramen will transmit the infraorbital artery, the infraorbital vein, and the infraorbital nerve. Um, this is another sensory nerve, and if you think about the distribution of the three branches of the, man of the um, trigeminal nerve, it's the maxillary nerve that's carrying sensation back from this region, so the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. So the infraorbital nerve is a branch of the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve that is carrying sensory information back from this region of skin here. So infra 
orbital foramen very nearby <laughs> there's a little little dimple it's barely visible which is why I always forget that it, it that it exists but this hole here is the zygomaticofacial foramen and that also carries blood vessels and a nerve of the same name uh, so again this is a sensory nerve carrying sensory information back from the upper cheek um, so again, this is another branch of the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. All right, so that's those around the orbit. Now, for the really fun one, I think I need to take the mandible off because I like this. This is good. All right, so here's the mandible. If you look on the deep surface in here, there is a foramen. There's a hole which goes into a canal, All right? There's one on, one on either side. Now that is the mandibular foramen and v1 v2 v3 the third branch of the trigeminal nerve the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve it sends off what gets called an inferior alveolar branch um, which runs into that mandibular foramen and the inferior alveolar branch of the trigeminal nerve is going to carry sensory information back from the teeth so the mandibular branch is sensory from the teeth and that inferior alveolar nerve will pass in there, will run around the jaw and it will come out here. Now this is the mental foramen. So mentum refers to the, the chin, the thinking pose, right? So the mental foramen is in the chin and the inferior alveolar nerve then sends out a mental nerve a mental branch out through the mental foramen to carry sensory information back from the from the chin so still another branch of the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve which is largely sensory that branch actually does do muscles of mastication as well but there you go mental foramen and that is pretty much it right but if we look um i put that on to show the palette but actually it's harder to see now let's take that back off again so in the palette there are hmm, there is an incisive fossa up here and there are greater and lesser palatine foramina here and here on either side and the greater and lesser palatine foramina convey greater and lesser palatine blood vessels and also greater and lesser palatine nerves which if you've been following the theme this is the the hard palate is part of the maxilla um, the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve is sending those greater and lesser palatine nerves to the palate to carry sensory information back from the palate Oh, that's oh that actually goes in quite a way. That's the greater palatine foramen, foramen there. Oh yeah. The incisive fossa up here. So these are the incisors, right? These teeth. So this incisive fossa in the hard palate. Let's just say it conveys a number of blood vessels and nerves to the hard palate as well. But incisive fossa, greater and lesser palatine foramina there. Hmm. So there you go. For once, we've actually got some straightforward anatomy. They've got sensible names, uh, these foramina, orbit, supraorbital, infraorbital, um, and they convey blood vessels and nerves with the same names. There's not a lot of work to do there. Why do you need to know this? Well, it completes some of the anatomy here. It completes some of the branches of innovation. But also, you know, if you wanted to anaesthetize regions of the face, these bony canals give you landmarks telling you where you will find this nerve because it's going to come out of that foramen there so you could put block around that to anesthetize that part of the face if you needed to um, all right but there you go uh, those are the foramina of the viscerocranium if you want it to be fancy viscerocranium being the bones of the face um, there are probably some a couple of other ones like the nasolacrimal duct in there, but that's, I don't know, that's kind of a nose thing or an eye thing. Um, but that's, those are the ones I can think of. Okay, 
See you next week. Maybe we'll find some more skull anatomy to talk about, or maybe we'll shift to somewhere else for a bit. Bye.